I'm Blankenship. I'm driver trainer from McGough County Schools. I'm here to do an updated version on the school bus pre-trip. The pre-trip we do every morning to make sure your kids get to school safe. Uh, a couple things I'd like to mention before we get started. Uh, all cell phone use on school buses is prohibited unless it's an extreme emergency. And also a Kentucky school bus is not allowed to make a right turn on red. That's due to the uh, bus's slow acceleration. The bus could be hitting the side somewhere, not only injuring our precious cargo, the children, but hurting someone in our community. We don't want that to happen. So I'll get started with the pre-trip. First thing I do, I'm looking at the posture of my bus to make sure it's not leaning to the left or right. If it should be leaning, it should be a busted shock, broken leaf spring, or a flat or underinflated tire. I'm coming to the top of my bus. I have a two-way radio antenna. I'm making sure that it is secure and intact. I have three amber clearance lights. I'm making sure there's none of them missing. They are secure and intact. I'm checking my big reds and big yellows, part of my eight-way warning system. I'm making sure the lenses are intact and secure. I'm making sure my bus is labeled school bus. Now I'm looking at my two at the backs of my outside mirrors on the side. In the brackets, I see no damage to the brackets, and I see no damage to the back of the mirrors. I'm looking at my front windshield. I see no cracks or damage to my front windshield. And I'm looking at the rubber seals around the windows to make sure there's no dry rod or cracks. I'm looking at my wiper arms. There's no debris caught in my wiper arms. I'm looking at my overall hood now. I see no cracks or damage to my hood. I'm looking at the backs of my crossover mirrors and brackets. The crossover mirrors have no damage, no debris, no damage to the brackets. I'm looking at my four amber turn signals. They are intact, no damage. I'm looking at the grill. There's no damage to the grill, no debris. I'm looking through the grill at my radiator. I see no damage, no leaks in my radiator. I'm looking at my headlight covers. They are secured intact, no damage. I'm looking at my front bumper, it's intact. All the bolts are in place, it's secure. And I'm also looking at my crossing gate, it is secure, there's no damage. Now I'm gonna look underneath the bus. I'm making sure that my front axle is secure. And it is, the axle secure, there's no debris caught in it, and there's no leaks such as antifreeze or oil. I'm checking. I'm gonna start up here with this amber clearance light. It is secure and intact. I'm checking the mirror bracket itself to make sure it's secure. I'm checking my flat mirror and my convex mirror to make sure they're intact and no damage. So my flat mirror and convex mirror is secure. I'm checking my side window here. There's no damage to it and I can expect the rubber seals since I'm up here a little closer. I see no dry rot or cracks in the side window or front window, window seals. I'm making sure my handle is secure. My bus has a proper bus number, 936. And I have a step here to make sure that it's operational and the bolts are in place and it is secure. Now I'm gonna check my hood latch. I see no dry rod or cracks in it. The bolts are in it secure. I'm checking the red lens on my turn signal. It is secure and intact, no damage. I'm checking this one. Crossover mirror bracket is secure, and the lens, the convex lens in this mirror is secure, no damage. I am now going to look at my crossing gate. I'll make sure it opens up easily and there's no damage. And I'm checking this crossover mirror bracket. It is secure, and the convex lens here is also secure, no damage. I'm checking the red lens on this turn signal. It is secure and intact, no damage. Then once again, I'll check this hood strap. I see no dry rot or cracks in it, and it is secure. All the bolts are in place. While I'm standing here, I'll go ahead and check this amber clearance light. It's secure and intact. I'll check this side window. It is no damage. It's secure, and all the rubber seals in the front and side window. No dry rot or cracks. I'm looking at my, mirror, my driver's mirror on this side. The bracket is secure. There's no damage. The flat mirror and convex mirror are intact. There's no damage to them. I'll check the handle on this side. It is secure. Once again, I have the proper bus number, 936. Now I'm checking the step on this side. It's operational and the bolts are in place. 
Now I'm going to raise the hood. Okay, we're going to start on the engine compartment. First thing I check while I'm up here, I check the wiper arm on the driver's side. It is secure. The washer fluid hose has no dry rod or cracks. It is intact. I'll check my wiring. There's no bare spots or frays in my wiring. I will pull this back, this cover, check my heater hoses to make sure there's no dry rot, cracks, or leaks in my heater hoses. Now I'll step right here. I'm going to check my transmission fluid and my oil to make sure they're at proper level. I'll come straight across. I'm checking my antifreeze reservoir. Is it proper level? The cap is secure. I see no leaks. And the hose is coming off of it, no dry rot or cracks or leaks. And any wiring coming off of it has no bare spots or frays. Now I'm coming to my power steering fluid reservoir. The cap is on type. I would check it for proper level. It is secure. I'm checking the hoses coming off the power steering fluid reservoir for any dry rod or cracks, and I see none. And I will follow these lines down. Right down here, I have a power steering pump. I'm making sure that it is secure and there's no leaks around it and it is gear driven. Now I have my air compressor right here. I'm making sure that it's secure. All the lines coming off of it, I see no dry rot or cracks or I see no bare spots in the wiring and it is also gear driven. Now I'm coming to my steering shaft, going into my steering box. My steering box is secure. The knuckle in the steering shaft to the steering box is also secure and I see no damage. Now I'm coming down to my frame. My frame has no dry rot, or I mean, excuse me, no cracks or welds. <clears throat> it is intact. Now I'm going to come down here to my drag link, my pitman arm, my drag link, and my tie rod. They are secure, and the nuts and pins are in place that hold them securely. I'm looking at my shock. It is fully extended, no damage, and all the brackets and bolts holding it are secure. <clears throat> I'm looking at my leaf springs. I'm making sure there are none, right here's your leaf springs, none of them's cracked or missing or damaged. And all the brackets and U-bolts holding them are secure. I'm now going to follow my air, look at my airline that goes to my air chamber. I see no dry rod or cracks. I'll check my ABS wiring to make sure there's no dry, uh, no cracks or any uh, bare spots and frays. Now I'm going to check my air chamber. It is secure, no damage. I will check my slack adjuster. There should be no more than one inch play and the pins are in place. Now I will check the rod between the slack adjuster and air chamber to make sure it's in there and it's secure, not bent or missing. Now I'm looking at the back of my tire. I'm looking at the hub, drum, rim, dust cover, and brake lining. And I will be checking those for cracks, welds, rust, and excessive brake dust, and I see none. Now I will check the back of this tire for any bumps, bruises, or cuts. I'll check my tread depth on the front tire. It should be 430 seconds. No mismatched tread, no recaps. Now I'll check the front of my tire here. I see no cuts or bruises. I'm checking the outside rim for any cracks or welds. I'm checking my lug bolts to make sure they are secure. A shiny spot would indicate a loose lug bolt. I'm checking my front oil seal. I see no leaks, no dry rotter cracks. It's secure. I will check my valve stem. To make sure it's secure, the cap's on, I would gauge my tires for proper level, and I have a mud flap. And now we'll go to the other side of the engine. Uh, once again, I will start with the wiper. This wiper arm is secure. The washer fluid hose has no dry rod or cracks in it. My air filter canister, it is secure. There's nothing blocking it. I have a radiator hose here. Make sure it's secure, no dry rot cracks or leaks. I'm looking at my fan blades. They are all, they are, all, <coughs> excuse me. I'm checking them for any damage, any blades missing, and they all, they're all there, there's no damage. I'm checking my radiator for any leaks and damage. I see none. My shroud is intact. I will come to my serpentine belt right here. I'm checking it for any frays or tears and no more than three quarter inch play. Next I have my alternator. My alternator is secure. It is belt driven. 
and the wiring going to the alternator is secure. There's no bare spots or frays. Now I'll come to these heater hoses. I'm checking them for any dry rot cracks, any leaks. I see none. They are secure. I'm coming down to my water pump, which is right here. I'm making sure it's secure and no leaks, and it is also belt driven. Now once again, I'm going checking my frame on this side. I see no cracks or welds in my frame. I have a washer fluid reservoir right here. It is full. The cap's on it. Secure, no leaks. The rubber hoses coming off of it have no dry rot cracks or leaks, and the wiring has no bare spots or frays. I have my air boot right here for my crossing gate. It is secure, no leaks, and the line coming off it has no dry rot cracks or leaks in it. Now I'll come to my shock. It's fully extended. No damage. The, braces, uh, the brackets and braces and bolts holding it are secure. Once again, I'm looking at the leaf springs on this side. None of them's cracked, missing, or damaged. The brackets and U-bolts holding it are secure. I'm looking down here at the tie rod on this side. It is secure. The pins are in place. Once again, I'm going to check the air line on this side. Going to the air chamber for dry rots cracks. I'm going to check the ABS wiring for any bare spots or frays. I see none. I will check this slack adjuster to make sure there's no more than one inch play and the pins are in place. And then I will check the rod between the air chamber and slack adjuster on this side of the bus. It is secure. It's not missing or damaged. Now, once again, on this back side of this tire, I'm checking the hub, drum rim, dust cover, and brake lining. And I'm checking it for cracks, welds, rust, and excessive brake dust. Now I will check the back side of this tire for any knots, bumps, cuts, and it is, there's no damage, it's secure. I will check the tread depth on this side to make sure it is 430 seconds, and it is, and there's no, not supposed to be any recaps or mismatched tread tires on the front. I will check the outside of this tire for any damage such as cuts, bumps, or bruises. I see none. I will check the lug bolts on this tire. They are secure. A shiny spot would indicate a loose lug bolt. I see none. I'll check the front oil seal on this side. It is secure, no leaks, no dry rot or cracks. I will check this rim for any cracks or welds. I see none. And this valve stem is secure, not damaged. The cap's on. I would gauge this tire for proper air pressure. And I have a mud flap. Now I'll put my hood back down. And I will make sure that the hood straps strap back securely. And this one is secure. Okay, I'll start down the side of the bus now. And the first thing I'm looking, I'm looking down the side of the bus. I'm looking for any apparent damage. I see none. I'm making sure it has the proper labeling. McGough County Schools has the right bus number, 936. And I'm also making sure the bus has reflective tape all the way down the side of it. Now I'll start here with my service door. I'm checking all four windows to make sure there's no damage to the windows. I'll check the rubber seals around it. All the rubber on the door, I see no dry rot or cracks. Then I'll step back. I'm going to look underneath the bus right here. I am looking at my fuel cage. I'll make sure there's no debris in the fuel cage and there's no, uh, de no fuel leaks underneath it. And I see none. Okay, as I walk back up to the bus, I'm looking at these three windows. I see no damage. They are secure. My outside loading light, it has a cover. It's not missing or damaged. Now I'm looking at my fuel door. It is properly labeled diesel fuel. Now I will open it up. I'm going to check to make sure that the cap is on secure and that there's no leaks on top of the tank. Now I'll make sure my door shuts back securely. And I have an amber reflector here on the side of the bus. It's intact. As I walk down the bus, I come to my next amber clearance light. It is secure intact. It's not missing or damaged. Checking my emergency window, it is properly labeled and it has reflective tape around it. the emergency window itself. I have another amber reflector right here, it's intact. I'm checking these other three windows, they're intact, secure. I have a compartment here, it is labeled reflective triangles, that's where my three reflective triangles are. I will make sure that they are in there. And I look in here, right here is my three 
reflective triangles. They are in there, they're secure. Now I've come to my back tire area. And the first thing I'm gonna do is look right through here. And what I'm looking at is I'm looking at my, my drive line and carrier bearing. They are secure. There's nothing wrapped around the drive line. And the U-bolt around the drive line is secure. I'm also looking at my exhaust. I'm looking for any black or brown spots which would indicate exhaust leak. I see none and the hangers holding the exhaust is secure. Now I'm gonna look at my frame all the way back. I see no cracks or welds in my frame. And I can see the rest of my exhaust from here. I'm looking, once again, I'm looking for black or brown spots, which would indicate an exhaust leak. I see none and all the hangers and bolts are secure holding the exhaust. Now I'm looking right here at my airbag. It is fully inflated. There's no dry rod or cracks. Right here by the airbag, I, even though you can't see it, there is a shock. It is fully extended. All the bolts and brackets are that holding it in place are secure. There's no damage. And then what we're going to do now, I'm looking at my leaf springs. I'm making sure that they're all there. None's cracked, damaged, or missing. The brackets and U-bolts holding are secure. I'm looking at my air chamber. It is secure. The air hose, the air line going to my air chamber is not uh, cracked or damaged. It's not leaking. My ABS wiring, I have no bare spots or frays. Then I will look at my slack adjuster to make sure there's no more than one inch play. The pins are in place and that the rod between the slack adjuster and air chamber is not damaged or missing. Now I'm going to look at the back of this tire. Once again I'm checking the hub drum rim, dust cover and brake lining and I'm looking for any cracks, welds, rust or excessive brake dust. Now I will check the back of both tires. I'm looking for any cuts, bruises and I see none. I will check the tread depth on both tires. They should be 2 30 seconds. I will check the space between my bud rims. Make sure there's nothing lodged between the tires and there's not. Now I will check the outside of both tires to make sure there's no cuts, bruises, or abrasions on those. I see none. I'm looking at the rim, inside and outside rims. I'm looking for any cracks or welds and I see none. I'm looking at my lug bolts once again. Make sure they're secure. If there should be a loose one, there would be a shiny spot indicating a loose one. I see none. I'm checking my rear oil seal. It is secure. I see no leaks. And I will check both valve stems to make sure that there's no damage to them and the caps on. And I would gauge both tires for proper air pressure. Now as I stand up, I have another emergency exit window here. I'm making sure that it's properly lab labeled. It has a reflective tape all the way around it. As I walk down, I'm checking the rest of my windows for any damage. I see none. I have a red clearance light up here. There's no damage to it. Lens cover's not missing. It's intact. I have a red reflector. It is intact. I'm checking my wraparound bumper on this side. I see no damage. It's secure and the bolts are in place. Now we'll move to the back of the bus. <coughs> Once again, I'm starting off back here. I make sure the bus is not leaning to the left or right. I'm checking its posture. If it should be leaning to the left or right, it could be a uh, busted shock, broken leaf spring, an underinflated or flat tire, or a deflated airbag. Now I'll come to the top. I have three red clearance lights. They are intact. There's no damage. Once again, I have my big reds and big yellow lenses. They are part of my eight-way warning system and they're not damaged or missing. My bus is labeled school bus. I am checking all four back windows and I see no damage to those. I'm looking at the seals around those windows to make sure there's no dry rot or cracks. I'm making sure that my back emergency door is labeled emergency door. I make sure the back of the bus and the door has reflective tape around it. I have a reflective excuse me, sticker on the back. It says stop. When red lights are flashing, it's intact. It's in place. I'm checking my two amber turn signals. They are intact. The lens is not broken or missing. I'm checking my four red brake lights. They're intact. Not, there's no damage. None's missing. I'm checking my clear backup lenses to my backup lights. 
I see no damage to those and they're intact. Uh, I have a license plate. My bus is labeled 936, got the proper number, and I have two red reflectors on the back and they are intact. Now I'm looking at my back bumper. It is secure, no debris caught in it. The bolts are in place. I also have another reflective sticker that says we stop at all railroad crossings. It is intact. And I'm making sure that my exhaust is not pinched together. Now I'm going to look underneath my bus. Once again, I'm looking at the rear axle. I see no leaks and I see no debris caught up under the bus. Now I'm going to walk up to my, the back of my bus. First thing I'm checking is that my license plate light has a cover. It's not damaged or missing. I'm looking at my exhaust pipe, making sure it's sticking out one inch past the back bumper, and it is. Now I'm going to check the operation of my back door. As I open it, I'm looking up here at my, my door slide. It's intact. Now the bolts are missing. I'm looking at the inside of my emergency door. It is properly labeled. The window has no damage. There's no cracks or tears in the rubber seals of this window and the lower window. I am making sure that all the bolts are in my hinges. They are secure. Make sure the instructions for how to operate the door. It is displayed. My handle is secure. And this handle works properly. Now I'm checking my rubber seals around my back door. I see no damage to those. And I'm also looking for black spot at the bottom of this door, which would indicate a bad seal letting exhaust fumes in. Now we'll start down the other side of the bus. Once again, I'm looking down the side for any apparent damage. I have the proper labeling, McGough County Schools bus 936, and I have the reflective tape going all the way down the bus. Now, I'll start here with this red clearance light. It's intact, no damage. I have a red reflector. I have no damage to it, it is secure. The wraparound bumper on this side is secure and the bolts are in place. Now I'm going to come on down. I have an emergency exit window here, which I'm scanning my other windows for damage. But it says emergency exit. It's properly labeled. has reflective tape. Uh, the back tires on this side are a repeat of the other side I just done. As I come on down, I'm scanning my windows for damage. I see none. I have an amber clear slide up here. It is not damaged or missing. I have my side emergency door. It is properly labeled. There is no damage to the window or seal. The seals have no dry rots, cracks, tears. The window's not damaged. It is intact and I have the reflective tape around my emergency door. And I have a amber reflector down here below the door. It's intact. I will check the operation of this door. Okay, it opens easily. I'm looking up here at my slide. It's intact. My door operation. It works properly, easily. My handle is secure. It's properly labeled how to operate the door. It is, in, is displayed. This inside window has no damage. Rubber seals are intact, no dry rot, cracks, tears. And it is properly labeled emergency door. Now I'm checking the rubber seal around this door. I see no damage to it. And I'm also looking <clears throat> to make sure that this emergency exit is not blocked in any way. As I come on down, I'm still scanning my windows. I now come to my other emergency exit window. It is properly labeled. There's no damage to the window and it has a reflective tape around it. As I come on down, I come to my stop sign. My stop sign is intact. I see no damage. It has six inch lettering, reflective lettering saying stop. I'm checking my two red lenses here. I see no damage to those. They are intact. I will now open my sign. It opens easily. I will check the red lenses on this side. I see no damage to those. They're not missing. Once again, I have six inch reflective lettering. It says the word stop. I'm checking my wiring to my lights here for any bare spots or frays. I'm checking my cable to make sure the pins are in place and there's no frays in my cable. And my rubber air boot to the stop sign has no dry rot cracks in it. It is secure. And the bracket itself is secure. I'll look right down here and I have an amber reflector. It is intact. I'm going to check my driver's window. It opens and closes easily. I see no damage to the window. 
Now I'll step right down here. I have a battery compartment. It is properly labeled battery. I will open it up. And what I'm looking for in here is I'm checking all the battery cables to make sure they're secure. There's no corrosion. There's no dry rod or cracks in that. The batteries are secure and none of them are tipped over. I'll make sure the door shuts back securely. Okay, that's all the outside inspection. We'll go start on the inside inspection now. And my service door, it opens and closes easily. I'm looking up here at the door rod. It is secure, the pins are in place. All the bolts are secure in the brackets holding the door. I will check all four inside windows for any damage. I see none, I'll check all the rubber seals to make sure that they are intact, no dry rod or cracks. The next thing I will check is my handle here. It is secure. My step light has a cover. It's intact. I'm making sure that my steps are intact. There's no debris, nothing loose for the kids to trip over. And it is properly labeled, watch your step. Now I will step up. I'm here in the landing area. I see nothing here for the kids to trip over. Everything's clear. I will check my fire extinguisher. It is secure pins in place and it is properly charged then I will look behind my seat here and I'm making sure that I have a first aid kit and a body fluid cleanup kit now I'm going to make sure that my seat is secure and it is I will sit down in my seat now and buckle up I'm going to put my seat belt on to make sure it works properly and it's secure and it does now I'm going to start my bus. Okay, I've had a safe start. My bus started safely. My ABS light was on. It's flashing, telling me that my analog brake system is working. I will turn my lights on. I will start up here to the left. I am looking at my defrost fan here. It is secure and there's no bare spot or a phrase in the wiring. I will check my driver's window from the inside to make sure it works properly. There's no damage to the window on the inside. I'm making sure that I have spare fuses and I have a seatbelt cover and it is secure. I will come up here now to my two-way radio. It is secure and working properly. Checking the wiring to the two-way radio and to the microphone to make sure there's no bare spots or frays. I see none. I'm going to start with these two switches right here on the control panel. This is my left fan to make sure it works on low and high, and it does. I'll check the right fan, which is right up here, on low and high. Okay, now I will check my midship heater. It's on low. And high, it works properly. My step well heater, low and high. Check my driver's heater, low and high. My rear heater on low and high. And then I have a defrost fan up here. My defrosters, low and high. Uh, these right here are my mirror adjustments. I know they work properly because I had to adjust the mirrors before I got on the bus, when I got on the bus this morning. Okay, I'm looking to see that my strobe light is on. I see the switch is lit up, indicating my strobe light has power. To check my strobe light, I would either have somebody step outside and look at it, or I would raise the rear hatch to look at it. I have a heated mirror switch. Once I turn it on, that switch also has a light indicating that it is getting power and that my heated mirrors are working properly. I have my dome lights, I will switch them on. I'll look at my overhead mirror to make sure they are all on, and they are. It also has a light indicating it has power. I have an override switch here. That's in case your eight-way warning system doesn't work the regular way. So we have a backup. It's called your override. I will flip it on. I see that my stop sign has come out. The lights are flashing. I see my big reds flashing in my mirrors outside. And to check the back ones, I would ask somebody to go outside and check them. I see that my crossing gate is out. And I also have an indicator on my dash here, and it's telling me that my big reds are on. 
While I've got them on, I have a crossing gate cancel button. I will make sure that it is working. I will hit it and my crossing gate should come in. And there it goes. It's coming in. Okay, I will turn this off. Okay, next is my four-way flashers, which are your emergency flashers. I will flip them on. I see them flashing outside in the crossover mirrors. I see my two indicators on the dash are flashing. And to check the back ones, I would have somebody walk out there and check them for me. I have a noise suppression button, and what that does, I can turn on radio, heaters, and if I need to talk to my students, all I have to do is flip this button, kills all the noise, and it's working properly. Now I'm going to check my eight-way warning system, which is my big reds and big yellows. I'm going to flip the button on. I can see my big yellows flashing out here. I had to check the ones in the back. I would walk back and look out the emergency door to make sure they were working. And I have an indicator flashing on the dash telling me that my big reds, maybe my big yellows are flashing. I will flip my door switch one time. My big reds are on. I can see them in my mirrors. I would have somebody go around back and check the back ones, make sure they were working. My crossing gate is out. My stop sign is flashing. I can see that it's out. And once again, the indicators tell me on the dash that they are on. And now I will check my service door. It opens properly and easily. And it should shut when it shuts back. Everything should be turned on. And it is. Okay, now I'm going to start up here with my overhead mirror. I'm making sure that it is secure, that the seal around it is intact, no damage, and it is adjusted properly for me. I'm checking my visor. It is also secure and intact. No damage. Now I'm looking out my front windshield. The first thing I'm looking at, I'm checking all my mirrors to make, their adjust, make sure they're adjusted properly for me. I'm looking at the inside window itself. I see no damage to the window. No cracks. I'm looking at all the rubber seals on my inside windows and side windows to make sure there's no damage to the windows and no dry rotter cracks in those seals. I am also checking my wiper blades from in here. I see no cracks or tears in my wiper blades. Okay, now we're ready to start with the instrument panel. First thing I'm looking at is to make sure that my dashboard lights are on, and they are. They're working properly. I'm checking the temperature of my transmission. The temperature gauge says about 150. That is normal. I'm going to check my um, water temperature gauge. It should be between 180 and 210. It's showing about 180, it is doing great. I'm checking my oil pressure gauge, it's showing about 40 PSI's. My RPM gauge is working properly. My speedometer and odometer, I will check those once we get out on the road. I'm looking at my voltmeter, it should be between 12 and 14, and it is in the range, it's the proper range. My fuel gauge is working properly. I'm checking my front and back air pressure gauges. They should be showing about 120 PSI's and they are. Now I'm coming up my steering column. It is secure, intact. My tilt wheel works properly. I also have another emergency flasher button on my steering column. I will check it to make sure it's working properly. I see my flashers on outside and my crossover mirrors. I have my indicators on the dash are flashing, and once again, I would ask somebody to go out back and look at the lights to make sure they're working. Now I'm going to check my wipers on low and on high. It's working properly. I will make sure that the wipers dispense washer fluid, and it's working properly. Also on the same uh, control, I have my dimmer switch. I will brighten and dim my lights. I can see on my crossover mirrors they are changing and I also can see that I have an indicator on my dash telling me my lights are on high beam. Now we'll check my left turn signal. I see that it is flashing out here. In the front I have my indicator here is flashing. My right turn signal I see it flashing in the crossover mirror. The indicator in here is working and on both turn signals I would have somebody go out back to make sure they were working. Now I'm going to check my steering wheel. There should be no more than two inches of play in a 20 inch steering wheel. And it, is, it has the proper uh, turning radius. And I have a horn. 
Now what I'm going to do next is call the service brake test and to do it I would put the bus in drive, release the parking brake, get the bus up to five miles an hour and hit my service brake down here to make sure it's working properly. Uh, what I'm going to do now next is my brake adjustment test and the way we do that with the parking brake applied we put the bus in drive. I will get it up to 1500 RPMs if my bus should move my brakes need adjustment. Okay, the bus did not move. That tells me that my brakes are properly adjusted. I will put the bus back in neutral. Uh, there's one item I like to check. It's not exactly on the pre-trip, but I ask my drivers to check it, and that's to make sure my backup alarm is working. I can hear it, and what I would have somebody do is step out back and tell me that my backup lights are working properly also. Okay, I'm going to get ready to prepare for my lab test, but before, as soon as I turn my key off, I have to do a walkthrough. I have a walkthrough alarm on the back door, so I will get ready to go turn it off. Most new buses are equipped with a walkthrough alarm. It's to make sure that the drivers do their walkthrough. On this model of bus, it's a 2009. We have to raise the back door handle, and the alarm goes off. On some of the newer buses, you leave the bus running and the service door shut, and they have a red button up here. You'll push it to your inside lights flash twice, and then you know that walkthrough alarm is disabled. What I'm getting ready to do now is my air brake test. It's called the lab test, and it stands for leaks, alarm, and button. And the way you prepare for that, turn your key forward, release your air brake. Okay, with no brakes applied, I should lose no more than two PSIs per minute. Okay, with my brakes applied, I should lose no more than three PSIs per minute. I'm looking at it, and that's about what I'm losing, three, three per minute. I'm going to continue pumping my brakes off between 60 and 65. My low air alarm will come on. Okay, there's my low air alarm. It's working properly. Now I'm going to, now I'm going to uh, finish pumping my brakes off between 10 and 40 pounds of pressure. My air brake button will pop back out. That completes my lab test. My air brake system is working properly. Okay, the first thing I do now is I stand up and I look down the center aisle. What I'm looking for is any debris, anything loose that might the kids might trip over. As I walk through my bus, I'm looking at the fronts of my seats for any damage. I'm checking all my inside windows for any damage. And I'm looking at my light covers to make sure, I'm sure none of those are damaged or missing. As I walk through, I come to my first emergency exit window here. I'll make sure that it works properly from the inside and also that it is labeled properly. I see no damage to it, so I will check the latch to make sure the window works properly. Alarm works, window works properly. As I stand up, the first I come to my first emergency hatch. I make sure that it is secure, it is properly labeled emergency exit. It's secured, secure, will not come open. Okay, as I walk through, I'm still looking at light covers, my seat covers, make sure none's damaged or missing. I come to my next emergency window, it is properly labeled emergency exit. The instructions to open the window are also posted. And it works properly. Okay, now I've come to my side emergency door area. Once again, I'm going to look here and make sure my pad's in place. It is secure. I'm checking the inside of the door for any damage. I, I see no damage to the window. I see no cracks or dry rot in the rubber seals. It's properly labeled. This area is free of any debris. Anything in the way it is not blocked. And once again, it is labeled properly how to operate the door. The alarm works. Alarm works door opens properly. As I continue to walk through, I'm still looking at my seat covers, light covers for any damage. I'm checking the windows. I come to my next emergency exit window. It's locked, properly labeled. The instructions how to open the window is posted. 
and it works properly. The alarm works. I have an emergency exit window on this side. I will check it also to make sure that it's labeled properly. The instructions are on it. It works properly. I will check this emergency hatch. I will make sure that it is latched, it is secure, it is properly labeled, and there's no damage. As I come to the rear of the bus, I come to my back door emergency exit. I'm making sure the pad's in place. I'm checking all four inside windows for any damage. I will check the rubber seals around all the inside windows for any dry rock cracks or leaks. The uh, <coughs> instructions on how to op open the door is also posted on. Let's make sure it's posted on the door. I will check the operation of the door. And then once again, I double check to make sure there's no black at the bottom of the door, which indicates a bad seal and exhaust fumes in. Now as I walk up through my bus now, I'm making sure the backs of my seats I have no damage. I'm making sure all the bolts are in the legs and that they are secure. Okay, I see everything's secure so far. And I always check my head start belts to make sure they're secure. There's no damage to those. As I walk up through here, I see none. Now as I get back up to my landing area, I'm checking the overhead pad out on the service door to make sure that it is secure. I will check my service door itself is secure. Now in case of an emergency, I do have a dump switch. It is located right here. All I have to do is take this switch. I will flip it up. It releases the air off the door. I can open it manually. Now I will open it back up. I will flip the switch. It's not on. Well, I'll come open. I have an insurance card. There's one thing I would like to cover while I'm sitting here. A while ago when I had my service door open, I want to make sure that my service door light is working properly. Once my door opens, my service, my step light is on. So that, that is our uh, new pre-trip inspection on Kentucky school buses. Hope you enjoy it.